movieweb.com. The thing about low riding, we don't really go anywhere. We just take our time getting there. You know what I'm saying? Low and slow. Yo, what up, Che? Trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want all the juicy details. I heard you guys got into it. I might even ride shotgun. Let him drive. The king's finally going to give up the throne. Hey, man, I said drive, not wear the crown. <laughs> So, um, like, how does, how does the mission that you guys portray in the film uh, compare to, like, how the mission that you guys grew up in and, like, the, or, like, the contemporary uh, mission district? The fact is the mission, um, not unlike a lot of places, is, is a neighborhood that's always in transition. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that's key about the mission of today versus the one that existed then is the heart really remains the same. It's, it, it really has a, a Latin soul and a spirit there. Uh, it's a kind of Latin crossroads of the world, isn't it? The Latino family is still at the heart and soul of the neighborhood. And so I, I, whether you're talking about 20 years ago when we were when we were young or right now, that's still the case. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. So like, I, I gotta say, these cars are just absolutely gorgeous in the film. Right. So, and like, I believe you, you based the Che off of your friend Che, who's a low rider consultant. So He's Mr. Michelle, man. <laughs> were any of these like actually his cars that you guys had in the film or? No, but, uh, but his friend's cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the 64 Chevy, the one that my character builds for yeah, yeah. a graduation gift for his son, that's my car. Oh, really? Yeah. We, you know, uh, when we first started hanging out with, with Che uh, in, in sort of consulting on the idea for this film, it was probably about a dozen years ago. We didn't even know what the structure of the film was. We knew we wanted to tell a story yeah. in the mission and, and use these beautiful cars. So he took us to a show in, at the Cow Palace, and I saw that car, the, the 64, in a parking lot. I left a note on the windshield and said, it's a beautiful car. Congratulations. If you ever want to sell it, let me know. <laughs> A week later, I got a phone call and took wow. care of biz. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I really loved your performance in the film, and like, it, it's it's kind of it's a performance you don't really get to see from you that often. So, like, what do you think like your fans might take from this film? Like, it's, it's not a performance that we see from you quite uh, often, like this kind of character. So, what do you think your fans will kind of take away from this film? You, I think you're right. It's not a performance that fans often see, um, but it is reminiscent of a of a, a role I played in a film back in 1991 for Taylor Hackford called yeah. Blood In Blood Out. Mm -hmm. And that also was an opportunity to play like a hardcore cholo. And you know, the fact is, we're f we love cholos. <laughs> we're, we're, we're fans of, of characters that are like that. You know, it's, it's part of the American like cinemascape on some level. These are these are tough, you know, uh, kind of loner individuals who can take care of business. We really respond to characters like that. But mm -hmm. what the, in the interesting thing for for us really as filmmakers was to take that archetype. You know, take that familiar character and then kind of take him in a territory that the audience is not used to seeing. So for you know, for Che, we'd like to say this is a coming of age story, not of the son, but of a father who you know who is at midlife and has to kind of go on this inward journey. And I don't think you've ever seen a, a cholo do that do that before. <laughs> so like uh, yeah. I read that you guys actually had uh, a lot of residents of the mission like uh, like in the film and like actually doing some of the behind the scenes. So will that that stuff be on the DVD like the the, sh the stuff that they shot the actual mission, mission residents? We, you know, we hope to, we hope to get that at some point. But we did. Uh, we grew up in San Francisco, and we've always dreamed about making a film in the Mission. And, and when we had decided to make this film, we knew we wanted to get as many people in front of the camera as as, as behind it. So we actually cast a lot of young uh, Mission kids who are acting for the first time in the film. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. So like, I, I love the supporting cast here as well. There, I mean, Erica, Erica did love a really good performance too. So like, what was it like working with her and just like the rest of this incredible cast? Erica's an amazing actress mm -hmm. because she's the the sort of the physical, spiritual, moral strength you see from the character she has in real life. Uh, you know, she she doesn't suffer fools very well at all, and 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 it, it was it was really pretty cool playing opposite her. Um, Jeremy Ray Valdez, who plays my son Jess, also a tremendously gifted young actor. Jesse Borrego. Jesse Borrego, who was uh, I mentioned Blood and Blood Out. He was in that film. He was in Peter's first film, Follow Me Home. So we were very fortunate to to have uh, assembled a, a, ca a cast of characters, actors who who really you know want to take this journey with us. Um, it, it's a low-budget feature, you know. It's going to need a lot of help to get out there and a lot of support. Uh, you know, if films like this are going to be told in the future, people have to show up and actually, you know, lay their dollars down on opening weekend to demonstrate 
that they have a life and that people want to see them. And, mm -hmm. and these, these actors were really happy to be a part of that process. I, I would say that, you know, the film examines really heavy themes, obviously. But just like in real life, and certainly it holds true for this neighborhood, that sometimes in the, in the face of that emotional heaviness, there's always room for levity. There's always room for an opportunity to laugh and to have a good time, because that's really what life is about. When you live within a community that's, that's, that's constantly faced with adversity, sometimes that's all you can do in the face of that adversity is to goof on each other, have a laugh, and that's life on some level. You know, Life is a series of obstacles. But in this particular case, it's a pretty fun ride to take. That is. Remember, my brothers and sisters.